Uh, right, let's uh, let's do another review. Tell us about this uh, this horror movie that we've got. Smile, which is a horror film by Parker Field, adapted from his 2020 short Laura Hasn't Slept. Susie Bacon is Rose Cotter, a doctor working gruelling hours uh, in a psychiatric unit. Terrified young woman comes into the unit claiming that she is being followed by something demonic and smiling. Here's a clip. I'm going to have to ask you a couple of questions that might sound stupid. What day of the week is it? Thursday. And the month? October. I'm not crazy. Just tell me what's going on. (sighs) I'm seeing something. Something no one else can see except for me. What happens when you do see it? It's smiling at me. But not a friendly smile. It's the worst smile I've ever seen in my life. And whenever I see it, I just get this god-awful feeling, like something really terrible is going to happen. Hey, it's okay. Laura, hey, can you look at me, please? Blimey, Charlie. So what then happens is her face cracks into a terrible smile. Whose face? The per- person that we just heard then saying, I'm being pursued by, by something with a terrible... So not, not the sort of specialist? No, not the... No, exactly. And, um, and then uh, attacks herself. And uh, Rose uh, says she's fine, you know, but everyone thinks that you must be traumatised because somebody just, you know, committed suicide in front of you. But she then starts to have visions of the smiling girl and she becomes petrified that she is being followed by a curse. In fact, she is being followed by something very like the curse from the original Ringu. In the original Ringu, um, there's the whole thing about the videotape, you watch it, seven days later you die. There is a setup that here that it's, it's not the same, but it's similar. So it's not the most original horror film of, of recent years, and it does rely very heavily, as I think you kind of heard slightly from that, on the quiet, quiet, bang, loud noises stuff that we've talked about in that the past. That was quite scary, though, I have to say. Yes, and that's the point. What it does do is use a familiar box of tricks rather well. I jumped or jolted at least three times, and in between, I realised that I was actually quite enjoying the anxiety of wondering where the next revelatory jolt was going to come from. It's not quite, quite none, which was always kind of really boring. Actually, the creepy smile thing, which is done, it's every now and then they do the creepy smile thing and it is really, really creepy. Um, And if you are a genre fan, you will notice names in the credit like Tom Woodruff, who I don't want to spoil anything about the film, but... There is stuff in there for the genre fans, which I enjoyed. There is a terrific score by Cristobal Tapia de Villa, whose credits include The Girl with All the Gifts, which I know you liked very much. like it, yeah. And I think is a really terrific composer whose whose score gets right under the kind of the skin, the atmosphere of the piece. So, look, yes, it's not the most original thing, but it's a nuts and bolts horror film that made me anxious, made me enjoy the anxiety, made me jump a few times, and has got a central riff which it plays very nicely and then stops in a nicely dark way. So I was surprised by how much I thought it was decent. I know that that's not everyone's opinion. Colin Scott in Chesterfield, a long-term heritage listener loving the new format. Thank you. Just escaped from my local bankrupt cinema complex, having been eligible for a special early viewing of Smile. So, in the positive, the opening sequence, which we have seen most of in the trailer, is good. It's creepy. Caitlin Stacy is perfectly cast as Smile Girl. Some perfunctory quiet, quiet bang follows, but honestly, we once we got to about a third of the way in, my sirens were sounding. Here we are, in 2022, with a film that has a central message of, quote, Crazy people are crazy and you should be scared of crazy people because they're scary and don't be around crazy people because it's catching. As And that bit was in parentheses. At, as this continued, I became more and more angry. A brief opportunity near the end for some minor attempt at redemption was lost for a generic horror trope ending and a scene that was as moronically stupid as it was lacking in any sense of a decent special effect. I am sure that my anger at this film is OTT for something that is actually too bland for major comment, but seriously, anxiety, depression, PTSD and psychosis really should be treated more sensitively in this day and age. Colin Scott signs off 10 more years 
point d'exclamation <laughs> and kind regards. Okay. Well, look, thanks for the email. Um, here's the thing. In terms of that thing about the special effects at the end, which was kind of what I was referring to, I don't agree. I thought they were well done and I enjoyed them. Um, but I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of creature feature stuff. As far as the, uh, the issue that you raise about the film's treatment of mental illness, it's worth pointing out that the film is about a curse and, um, a character thinks they are cursed and everyone says, no, you're not cursed. It's, you know, you're, you're suffering PTSD. No, it's a curse in the same way that, in The Exorcist, the Doctor spent a long time saying, we think it's temporal lobe, we think it's this, we think it's that and the other. And the audience is going, no, she's possessed by a demon. The film is called The Exorcist. So I do understand that, I mean, I think you flagged this up yourself in the in the email, that your alarm bells went off and you took against the film and you say actually very generously, you know, maybe kind of overreacted. I don't think that's sorry, that's not the right way of saying it, that your reaction was heightened. I don't think that Smile is any better or worse than any number of horror films in the way in which it depicts or uh, uh, treats mental illness, because it's not about mental illness, it's about a curse. Um, if you look back at the history... Like a proper genuine curse. Yes. Like Ringu is about a cursed videotape. There is no sense in... The whole point in Smile is when people keep saying, you're suffering from PTSD. No, she's not. She's suffering from a cursy thing. because It's a horror film in which there are big, bangy, cursy things. Um, and I think that it's, it's, it's odd to pick, to pick out Smile particularly for criticism when, you know, in a genre of films of which one of the big daddies that we just talked about in the thing is called Psycho, and in which, you know, you could make the very same claims about that. I don't think that Smile is about mental illness. I think it is about a curse. But that said, any number of films, and horror is going to be particularly true of this, can have the appearance or wear the clothing of a film that is about, uh, you know, mental illness. And, of course, all horror is, in the end, allegorical. So the point that you make... You can, you could read it that way if you wanted to. I think it's more to do with that, and I absolutely respect your opinion, and I would absolutely respect somebody saying, look, if this is a subject about which you have particularly strong feelings, this is not the film for you. It also deals with suicide, which is a subject which is, you know, often very, very problematic in terms of films, but it is marketed as a horror film. It says what it is. The trailer makes that pretty clear. I I don't think it should be singled out for criticism. Uh, you can uh, Does respond. Fair? Does that sound fair? Yeah, to you? that sounds that sounds fair. I haven't seen the film. No, no, no. But, I know, but you know, um, if you'd like to take part in this conversation, which I'm sure will continue, correspondence at kermitamayo dot com dot com <laughs> <Kermit-a-mayo. laughs> com. It's not that hard. No, that was a great video, wasn't it? I couldn't take my eyes off it. No, neither could they. Do they know? Do you think that they can keep up to date with all things Kermit and Mayo's take by following us? on our socials, because they're all here below. Well, they definitely know it now. That's true.